Hello friends and welcome to today's project of making Membrillo, or also known as quince cheese or quince paste. The ingredient list is in the description. This is a typical sweet snack eaten in Spain, usually accompanied with cheese. First, let's break down what is a quince. Just imagine an apple and pear had a love child. That love child is a quince. For this recipe, you will need about 5 large whole fruit. First things first, we will have to peel them. This traditional and predominantly from the Iberian Peninsula is also found in other parts of the world. It is also very popular in Brazil as marmalade, France, pâte de croix, Italy as cotognata, and several other countries like Mexico, Paraguay, Argentina, and Turkey. After you have broken them down, take a large pot. Place all of the cut pieces in. Next, we're going to need to peel two lemons. This is just going to help in adding to the freshness of the quince. Peel the lemons and pour all of the peel into the pot with the quince. Then pour enough water to cover the quince. Don't worry about the amount. Take the pot over to the stove and turn on the heat to medium to high. We want the mixture to boil. Cook the quince until it becomes soft like a potato. A good way to test if the quince is ready is to stick a knife into a piece and if the knife comes out with no resistance, it is ready. Just like this. After that, take a bowl and a sieve. Pour the quince over the sieve. Keep the water. Remember, do not throw the water away. Now, take a little bit of time and go through the quince and take the lemon peel away. After the quince has been drained, measure the amount of the cooked quince. The weight of my quince came to about 1010 grams. Let's round it up to 1 kilo. Now, while the quince is still warm, take it over to your blender, we're going to make this smooth. Remember, the cooking water, here is why we needed to keep it. There is flavor in there. Turn your blender on and make sure it blends well. After that, take your pot back and just to be a little extra, I'm going to strain the mixture, making it even more smooth. This is optional, as some recipes out there keep the pulp and fiber as a texture preference. I will be adding 50% of sugar to the weight of quince. There are some recipes out there that call for 100%, making it equal amounts of sugar to quince. It is all based on preference. I don't want it to be overly sweet, because the sweetness will concentrate more as we cook it on later anyways. Then I'm going to pour in 1% to the weight of quince. It will be 10 grams of vanilla bean paste that goes in. It doesn't sound like much, but the vanilla is just there to complement and shadow the main flavor, which is quince. Let's take the pot back to the stove. We want this to boil, but gently. So turn on your heat to medium to low. When you make this, you will require patience. We are currently at a temperature of about 44.5 degrees Celsius. We want to aim for 105 degrees Celsius. In the meantime, while it is boiling and cooking away, make sure you stay and stir. We do not want the bottom to burn. While that is cooking, let's prepare our setting vessel. Take a decent sized container. You can use glass as well if you want. Place two layers of cling film over and move it around so that it becomes the shape of the container. You can use some kitchen paper to help in making the corners smooth. Set that to one side for now. Just remember, the shorter, the thicker, and the shallower, the thinner. I'm going to go with this. The reason why I'm going with this is because I want to create nice little cubes later on. This is important, so take your time when you do this. In the meantime, I have placed a splash guard on the top of the pot to prevent the quince paste from jumping up while boiling. I want to prevent my stovetop from getting dirty. Also, remember to keep on stirring. This is how it should look like. This is a totally normal reaction. The quince will turn from a creamy white to anywhere from a light rosy pink to a deep rustic red. This is because cooking in the form of heat forms anthocyanins, which are natural pigments that can appear red in color. 
Remember when I said we're aiming for a temperature of 105 degrees Celsius? Let's go ahead and check the temperature. It is right now at around 104.5 degrees Celsius, which is a good range. We can take it off from the heat as the paste will still continue to cook. Take your setting vessel and pour the paste in. Make sure you work relatively fast before it starts to set. Use your spatula to even things out and use a wet palette knife to make the surface smooth. For the surface, you can take your time. Let this set at room temperature for at least six to eight hours or best overnight. There you go, nice and smooth. Plus it's shiny as well. Once it has reached room temperature, cover with a lid to prevent the top from drying out too much. In the meantime, while waiting, do check out my other videos. The next day. Let's have a look at what we made. Peel the cling film and just lift it up. That was easy. It has set beautifully. Let's cut up some pieces. Even the inside is shiny. Let me just remind you, this had a setting temperature of 104.5 to 105 degrees Celsius. It is firm enough to hold its shape, but still soft and delicate that I'm able to press with my fingers and it can break apart. Here is another example of how soft this is. Now, all that's left is to enjoy this with some cheese, specifically Spanish cheese. Why not go with a classic, Manchego? Have this for dessert or an afternoon snack, cheese with quince. I'm gonna have a taste right now. Damn, that is beyond. Just delightful with fruity notes, plus nuttiness from the cheese. Such a great combination. Well, it's no wonder a lot of people like eating this with cheese. Now, on a side note, let me show you what happens when you don't follow the temperature of 105 degrees. I've made another batch and where I brought it to 106, pushing to 107 degrees Celsius. You will be surprised by what even two degrees Celsius can do. The next day, Even though you do it the same and make everything smooth, when it comes time to test the texture, you will notice that bringing it to above 105 is perhaps too much. 105 degrees is the golden temperature for this paste. The taste is there, but the sugar and internal sugars have made it too firm. I can barely break it with my fingers. This is just to give you a comparison. You might like it firmer as well. And if you want it softer, you can of course just bring it below 104 degrees Celsius it will be more like a jam texture. Well, there you have it, Membrillo or Quince Cheese. I hope you've enjoyed this video and that it has inspired you to make it as well. If you did, do leave a comment and thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. Until next time, bye for now.